Hi everyone, my name is Carlos uh, with Drone Nerds. We're here in the beautiful Miami, Florida. Hey everyone, I'm Robert with Drone Nerds, your uh, drone enterprise solutions expert. And we're gonna talk to you today about the Matrice 4 unit. All right, we'll do a quick unboxing here. I have the M4E. I'm gonna pull that out here. As you can see, we've got the M4T on the table already. I'll go ahead and remove the lens cover. We'll set that to the side. We'll go ahead and unfold all the arms. And just like that, quick and easy, we're ready to go. So if you wanna, if, if you can say in two words, uh, three words, what will be the main difference between these two units? So if you're primarily using your unit for mapping, you probably wanna go for the enterprise unit. If you need thermal uh, application, you're definitely gonna get the M4T model. So let's talk about the unit, a couple features. You have the RTK built in. Um, you have your full obstacle avoidance sensor all the way around. We have all of our downward sensors per usual. Um, on the top of the unit is application for uh, any type of mods or payload. Um, keep in mind that you can put things like a spotlight or a speaker system, um, but there's also room for the parachute system if that's something that you need to have in there as well. Yeah, and if you notice as well, they have a new port in the bottom for payloads as well. So basically you can use accessories in the top, like you said, like the spotlight, like the speaker, and also you have for payload options in the bottom. So. Yeah, that's pretty incredible to have that many payloads on the unit. So what about the remote controller? Is it the same version of the remote controllers that we use with the other matrices? Um, actually, no, it's gonna be a new uh, controller. It's the RC Plus 2 controller. It's specifically designed for the new Matrice 4 series. Um, it's actually built in with AccuSync 4 uh, so that you will have pretty much consistent connection with zero to, to, to latency, if any at all, during your uh, your missions. Yeah, I see also that they clean out uh, where you used to have the HDMI outputs that were in the middle. And now you have it like on the edge, you have your USB-A on the other end. And as well, you have for your micro SD card and your USB-C type port. Uh, also, I see you still have the way to uh, for that external battery so you yeah. can keep the light. Yeah, you'll never have to turn it off. So if you're on a mission and your remote controller says it's a low battery, it's got its own internal battery, you can do a quick hot swap on the RC to not have to worry about that reboot sequence that a lot of people have to go through. I understand that I also kind of improved the processing power of the remote controller so you can do way more things on the remote controller without needing a computer for extra stuff on the surveying side, like a 3D mapping and 3D modeling. So we can take a look later on that yeah. thing is like, the really pre a, a, a big plus for, you know, when you're on the field and try to achieve things quickly. It's definitely got a lot of processing power in this new controller because it's gonna put your maps together, it's gonna put your models together all on the fly, in the field, in the palm of your hand. So there's definitely a lot more to this. It's not the same old controller rescanned or recolored. It's definitely brand new. It's fresh. It's got the best technology for the best connection at all times. I know now we have on the drones itself, the DI RTK module. Um, Basically, when now you're powering off the drone or cycling the battery, you can you go back in the air in 15 seconds. And for operations on search and rescue or law enforcement, that's a critical type of thing because even though this is not a dual battery setup, like we're used to like in the Matrix 30 that you just hot swap the batteries, you're grabbing a fresh new battery, pop, plug it in, turn it on, and in 15 seconds, you're back. You're Maybe. right, yeah, you're Because right. it's like a super super high technology uh gps yeah i noticed that with this aircraft um the time from entering a mission and launching is pretty much instantaneous which is kind of new and unusual for these drones often there's there's a lot of uh sync time or lock-in time to acquire rtk satellites and positioning before it actually takes off but from what i've seen with this and the few missions we've launched uh it's almost instantaneous so it's kind of shocking to see how quickly it goes from being powered on to executing the mission yeah and what else is on the case? Like, does it come with like a way to charge multiple batteries? So yeah, definitely you come with your multi-charger and you have a, a charging hub. So you can also charge the controller uh, as well as the battery at the same. Four batteries uh, with the charging. Four hub. batteries in the kit at the same time. And you have two USB-C type, one for, one for the remote controller, one for the hub. So that's nice. So you can like have all your batteries, uh, you know, ready to go like in no time. So. I guess we could talk really quick about the payloads. Um, both platforms have three cameras, being a wide, uh, medium tele lens and a regular teles telescoping lens and a laser rangefinder. As you know, the difference is the thermal uh, camera on the thermal capabilities, which you don't have with the enterprise version, only on the thermal version. Yeah. Um, both both of them, you know, are, are very useful. 
Uh, but of course, the M4T is going to give you 640 by 512 resolution on your thermal. And it also has a, a NIR auxiliary light um, so that you can get really close to objects and illuminate them in darkness. Yeah, and that's that's a big plus because when you're under uh, nighttime operations and you need to look for things that just the thermal just won't give you that type of information because you know, you're just looking at temperatures, but you really need to see like a, like a plate on a car or read a text, that an NIR a sensor will bring that readable type of image that you're looking for. So I think that's a big plus for this type of applications. And also a great thing about the camera, the laser rangefinder, um, it can detect objects up to 1.8 kilometers away. Um, and that's not just gonna be a, a iffy 1.8 kilometers. This thing will zero in on the, on the subject or an object that you've got focused on and you can get true clarity on that item at a really great distance. That means like reading license plate numbers on a car or simply just identifying a person based on you know accurately what they're wearing, even down to the color of their shoes if they're standing in a parking lot, it's that good. Yeah, um, that's what they added as well to this system, uh, what they call the DJI Advanced Pilot Assistance System. So this is when they merge their first big step on the AR augmented reality and AI classification. So when you fly in your drone in any type of situation and you have multiple vehicles, cars, boats, it, you can see clearly in the screen how it identifies their different type of objects. Even it pops up like a little icon on top of them, letting you know this is a person, this is a car, this is a boat. So easily for you, you can identify and decide where you want to keep your camera on. So I think that is helpful and way, it is one of the best tools that you can provide for these people that are in this type of field that need more data than just to see a camera itself. And I think I think with the tracking technology and what it's able to identify on its own, uh, one thing I really like is it's got built-in AI features. So by nature, it can track vehicles, boats, people. Um, but of course, you can always upload your own uh, imagery for it to search for. As I had mentioned, if you've got um, you know, law enforcement looking for a suspect, if they've got a single aerial shot of that suspect, they could actually put that into the algorithm and the drone will then go search for that person. And if they did see someone fitting that description, actually zoom in, lock into them. And as I mentioned, like up to 1.8 kilometers away. So it definitely can help identify suspects or, or even just things like inspections. You know, you have a lot of people who do inspections, um, you know, railroad inspection, for example. Maybe we want to see where there's a you know, um, parts missing from the railroad construction, and we can have the drone identify things like that on its own. So it's yeah. very useful. So um, the other thing that we we don't have to forget is you still have all these features that I'm putting down in this drone, be able to stream it to the software or the suites that DJI provide you, like FlyHub 2 or any third-party cloud service that you use to connect to your APIs. So that's amazing because the person that is in control, the pilot and looking at all this new data and information with the augmented reality and AI, now they can as well push it to their team that are remotely, that are in a computer, behind a computer or a desk or a control station of, or a facility, then you know everybody can be on board of what is happening, what the drone is seeing. So what you're saying is that even though it's a new system, we can still easily use all of our old flight planning systems and data collection systems we, we've used in the past it's just that we're using what we're doing with a better system now. Correct. It's the same DEI ecosystem, but now you have more features coming in this drone that now are being, you know, sent over to any to the cloud or the cloud mm -hmm. service. Yeah. We'll talk about your intelligent flight operations. Um, you know, you have your cruise, your fly to. We've also got smart track and point of interest flying. So you've got several modes that you can put the unit in for the different types of work that you're planning to do. Um, some of them may be new flight modes, but they're all very, um, they're very streamlined. They're just a couple taps and you got every, everything working the way you need it to. So just to go over some of the features of the remotes for now, um, being is it a, a new remote, there are also some new features. Um, it's got a high brightness screen. Uh, that means obviously uh, outside in sunlight, you're not gonna have any interruption. You'll be able to see clearly. Um, it's also IP54 rated. Obviously, people are going to want to know if they can get sure. a little rugged with this. It's not super waterproof, but it does need a little resistance there. Um, it'll operate in, you know, negative four temperatures Fahrenheit to up to 122. So you might be in the desert, you can be in the, the North Pole, should still be able to operate. Um, it's got a built-in high-gain antenna, which again, that's for the O4 Enterprise uh, technology that they put in there with There's 4G hybrid transmission yeah, solutions. And, and that's about like 15.5 miles that you can reach now with this old Ford technology. So that's really impressive. Yeah. And I think one of the points more than going farther than anything else is the clarity, the sharpness and the quality of the streaming 
connection that you have with the video on the drone, I think that's more important than how far you can go. So with this new bit rate that I have, it's I guess at 20 megabits per second on the connection that you have right now. So it is like this new 04 will give you sharp video, low latency. That also, because of, you know, also because of the signal type um, and its encryption, it's actually going to work better around buildings and in cities where there's instructions where before you may have had a lot of signal loss or interruption. This new system is actually designed specifically for high traffic areas where you normally would lose signal, um, the new O4 system will prevent that. So, oh, and now that you talk about encryption, I think that's one of the most important part on this drone. There's the local data mode, I think they call it, is one tap to clear all the information that you can have in the, right. in the drone and the remote controller. So right. basically, you are the one in control of where your information is stored, what you're gonna do with your information that the guys pretty transparent about. That is a big deal what you can do with information. You know are under control. So basically nothing is gonna happen if you don't want to connect to, you know, if you don't want to connect to the cloud, you don't want to use the DI servers for any API or any cloud service, you don't have to. Everything can be local. So that's a big plus as well for some agencies. Yeah, it definitely is. And even if you are gonna put the data on the secure cloud, you know, it's a, it's drone data that's shared uh, with DJI, but it's also secured and, and it's housed in an ISO 2701 compliant US servers. So it shouldn't be an issue that you, if you're worried about security of the data, but like you said, it's nice to be able to quickly wipe it on the fly or while you're doing something, or maybe, um, you know, you quickly just need to get rid of the data because you want to start over. You know, there's also yeah. that option as well. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's amazing. I think security right now is a big topic in the industry. And uh, of course, the guy taking this transparency and giving the users and pilots this feature is a big plus. Yeah, I would say that's true. I mean, they, the, the way these drones are designed, they're meant to do a job for you and get the data you need. It's not about transmitting your data or giving it to anyone else. It's only if you choose to share it. So right. this stuff is very secure. It's really impressive. So I understand like there's going to be like uh, some accessories also for the unit from the AI. So what options do we have right now? Um, right now, obviously, the most common accessories people need right out the gate are going to be a spotlight. Um, so there is a spotlight attachment that can go on top. You know, you can spot subjects up to 381 feet away. And it's also got two features. You're going to have always on or a strobe. So if you need a strobe light in the air or to be identified as an aircraft in the air, you can turn on that strobe mode. Um, you also have a speaker attachment that you can put on here. So you can capture real-time voice at, uh, and at, at the same time, you can have your light and your speaker mounted at the same time. So you can use both devices together or separately. And you can like play pre-recorded audio from the remote or send like real-time audio as well, right? Yeah, definitely. You can have audio clips that you want to play certain sounds repeated or at the same time, you can have real-time live audio from each. Okay, no, that sounds, this run is pretty complete as, as a form factor for the size that it is. So, you know, we've talked about a lot of the accessories and the features of the aircraft and some of the differences, but what would you say is the main difference between the M4T and the M4E? Yeah, that's a good question. I will just put it as simple as if you're going to the surveying or mapping, I will go with the Matrice uh, 4E. That's basically designed for mapping, surveying, uh, 3D modeling, uh, when you need to capture high resolution uh, images or data uh, because it's equipped with a more advanced uh, sensor is a four-third uh, mechanical shutter and is one of the fastest right now, 0 0.5 seconds interval shooting that will give you and opens a lot of capabilities when you need to trigger that camera as fast as you can while you're flying and without losing quality. On the other end, with the 4T, this I will say is more for the live or real-time type of a scenario, search and rescue, wildlife, something that you need to spot on and that mix with the accessories, as you're saying, with maybe with the speaker or the spotlight and as well with the near infrared sensor that will help you with any type of operations that you're doing at night, where you're doing at daylight and you are in the new layer of AI and augmented reality on the drone that will provide extreme useful data in your operations. So I think that will be the main uh, difference between them. Yeah, I think it sounds good. I think with all that being said, um. Let's go ahead and fly these things and check out some of the features. Yeah, let's go fly. Awesome.